So for this question then, what I've just done is sketch what we're given. That is our particle, mass of 20 kilograms. We've got this force of 40 newtons acting on it at an angle alpha, where tan alpha is 3 quarters. It's on a rough horizontal plane, coefficient of friction, mu, is 0.14. I'm taking g to be 9.8 meters per second per second in this question. And we've got to work out then what the acceleration of this particle would be. You'll also notice that I've moved the 40 Newton force across into the center of the object because we're taking it as a particle and I believe that we should have that force acting at the center here. Okay, so in order to find that acceleration, what I'm going to do is mark on all the forces that act on the particle and then I'm going to consider resolving forces vertically and horizontally and we should be able to build up enough information from the equations to work out what the acceleration is. So just mark in the forces then first of all that are acting on this particle. If we look at the fact that it's in contact with this horizontal plane here, there's going to be a normal reaction. So it's going to act upwards. I'm going to call it R newtons. Okay. And we've got the weight of the particle that acts vertically downwards. So that's going to be mg. The mass is 20, so it's going to be 20 times g. And that would be measured in newtons. There's also going to be a resistance to motion and the particle is going to move across to the right so friction will oppose that motion so it's going to act away from that towards towards the left okay now because it's moving it's in limiting equilibrium so therefore the force will be mu r so we know that mu the coefficient of friction is 0.14 I'm not going to just write mu in, I'm going to actually write 0.14, okay, times the normal reaction R, and that's measured in newtons. Now, when it comes to this 40 newtons force, because it acts at an angle to the directions we're going to be resolving in, remember I said earlier we're going to be looking at horizontally and vertically, then I need to split this 40 newtons into two components one horizontal in this direction and one vertical component. All right, so I'll just mark that in there, squeeze it in there like so. Okay, so what are these two components of the 40 newtons going to be? Well, the one that contains the angle is always cosine. So that's going to be 40 times the cosine of angle alpha. And that'll be measured in newtons. And the other one, that doesn't contain the angle is always the sine of angle alpha. If you're unsure of this, do go back and check out my tutorials on resolving or splitting forces, okay, into components. So we said this one will be 40 times the sine then of the angle alpha, and that will be measured in newtons. Now the other thing that I ought to put on here is the fact that it's going to accelerate to the right so we'll have an acceleration arrow in there and that's what we've got to find then what a is and the units will be meters per second per second right okay so let's start off then we now have got to resolve we've got to resolve upwards okay first of all and this is going to allow us to establish an equation that is going to contain that normal reaction R. So resolving upwards, applying Newton's law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration, what we've got is R, okay, that's in the positive sense. We've also got the component of the 40 Newtons acting upwards, which is going to be plus 40 times the sine of angle alpha. And then 
we've got the weight acting downwards, that's in the negative sense, that's minus 20g. And these two forces here, they're perpendicular to this direction, so they're going to have no effect at all in this equation. And so this is the resultant force acting on the particle in the vertical sense, and that is going to be equal to zero because the particle is in equilibrium in the vertical sense. It's only going to slide across to the right. OK, now we've got our equation. We just need to substitute our values for sine alpha in. And we know that tan alpha equals 3 quarters, so it's a good idea just to draw a triangle from here. And I'm just going to make that triangle so. This is alpha. Now we know that tangent is opposite over adjacent, so in a ratio this would be 3 units to 4 units there. And this is the th familiar 3, 4, 5 triangle. If you work out the hypotenuse by Pythagoras' theorem, you'll find it turns out to be 5. So when it comes to sine alpha, which is the ratio opposite over hypotenuse, you're going to get 3 fifths there. So we can just substitute our values in and rearrange this for r. So if I do that, we've got therefore r will equal, if I add 20g to both sides, that's going to be 20 times g, which is 9.8. And then I've got minus 40 sine alpha, if I take it away from both sides. So 40 times the sine of alpha, which we've seen is 3 over 5, 3 fifths, okay, opposite over hypotenuse. And if you work this out on your calculator, you should find that you get an exact value of 172. Okay, so that's that part done. Now all we need to do next is just look at resolving horizontally. Okay, so we'll resolve horizontally. To the right is taken as positive in the direction of the acceleration. Always do that, okay? So that means that the forces acting to the right is going to be the 40 cosine of alpha. All right, so that's 40 cosine alpha. And that's in the positive sense. We've got the resistance to motion, 0.14 times r. That's in the negative sense because it's in the opposite direction to that. So it's minus 0.14 times that normal reaction R. These forces here are perpendicular, so they don't come into the equation. OK, so this is the resultant force and it equals mass times acceleration. And it is moving this time, it's accelerating. So we've got the mass of 20 times the acceleration A, which is what we're trying to find. So if we just substitute our values in now, 40 times the cosine of alpha. Cosine of alpha adjacent over hypotenuse, that's going to be 4 fifths, OK? And then we've got minus 0.14 times R. We've seen R is 172. And that's equal to 20A. I can actually divide both sides by 20, so I might as well put that all over 20, and that will just give me A. And if you put this through your calculator, you should find that you get A equals 0.396. Don't forget those units, by the way, meters per second per second. Okay, so hope you've been able to get that one.